Hello, people of the interwebs. Gonna be working on Mr. Ghost again today, trying to wrap up the very last of the suspension, getting it dialed in so I can get this thing aligned. And I got a new tool I bought, I wanna show you. This is really waxy feeling paper. Feels weird. This is a bump steer gauge. The hydraulic jack, dial indicators, big wrapped up plate. So this guy right here goes underneath the wheel of the MR2, it looks like a tongue from the Rolling Stones album, kind of. Whole point of that bump steer gauge is so I can calculate to make sure the bump steer and roll center corrective plates I bought for the car are actually doing their intended function. You can't just bolt them on and expect the car to be good to go out of the box. If you guys are wondering what bump steer and roll center and all that stuff is, up above is a link to the last video where I explain a lot more on that process. This video is going to be getting everything dialed in and making use of these parts I put on the car. So I got to measure from the center of the hub to the bottom of the fender lip. And this is going to give me a measurement of my ride height as the vehicle is just setting with the suspension at zero or not under compression or rebound. I have such OCD. This is going to be so hard for me to find dead center. I guess to find dead center. Oh, okay. The very center of the Enki logo is dead center. So, 13 and a half inches is for the front. These little cubes with acronyms on them are representing wheels. Yes, I have square wheels. Okay, so front will be hopefully the same on both sides. Should be. 13 and a half inches. 12 and 15 sixteenths. 12 and 15 sixteenth of an inch. Somebody is cringing right now that I'm doing this in SAE and not metric. I'm sorry, I don't have a metric tape measure. I would if I had one. 13.5, this one is the same. Uh, this one is like seven eighths. It's pretty damn close. It might just be my measuring, but whatever. Close enough. My game plan for today is I need to get this front of the car, at least try to get it measured. And then Charlie's gonna be heading over here to help me with the rear because he's going to be fabricating new rear tie rods for this thing because that way I'll be able to correct the bump steer in the rear of the car since there was no parts I could buy for it, which means he's going to take the spindles to his machine shop and do some magic. Okay. Ooh. Wheel off. Hopefully, I don't have to pull a spring off on this thing. There's a slight possibility from the tutorial I watched online that the springs will have to come off because when I go to put the bump steer gauge underneath and jack up the bottle jack, it's supposed to compress the suspension all the way so I can take my measurements. However, because the MR2 is kind of light, it might accidentally pick up the front of the car. In that case, I'll have to remove the spring. First things first, this big plate needs to get mounted up on here which that's not gonna work because it's gonna hit my brake caliper if it's flush against this. Ha! Luckily, I have these wheel spacers left over from the TT that weren't used, extra ones. That, yeah, that's enough. Oh yeah, see what I'm talking about? So now I got this plate mounted on here and the wheel spacers gave me enough clearance so I don't hit my brake caliper. It would've been kind of nice if they would've included some spacers like that with this kit, but eh, whatever. Good thing I got wheel spacers. If you don't, use some washers or something. Next up is this big giant tongue piece. The ball jack goes underneath here, but an uh, issue I'm probably gonna run into because I have this thing on the quick jacks in the lowest setting is my little bottle jack that came with the kit might not be high enough to lift the car all the way, but if that's the case, then I'll just use a bigger bottle jack to compress my suspension fully. So, I'll slide this guy up underneath my lower control arm. Get it up under there, I'm gonna have to pump this up little bit. Put some lug nuts on here. Make sure this is snug. Last one goes on right there. There you go. And how am I doing with the level? The way that this works is these two gauges on either side of this massive plate are going to measure the difference in toe in as the suspension compresses. The bottle jack underneath here, I don't even know if I'm pointing at stuff, I'm just pretending I am. The bottle jack that's underneath here is gonna be used to compress the suspension and measure the bump steer. Then what I'm gonna do is lift this one inch 
and at one inch, I'll measure the difference between the two gauges, which will show me how much the toe in has changed under one inch of suspension compression. Then I can go all the way up to bump stop if I want and measure that too. I know I'm not the best at explaining this, but I'm literally just regurgitating information that I have educated myself on, on doing this and relaying it back to you guys. So I'm doing my best here. And then the same goes for rebound. So I'll let the suspension settle all the way, like if I were jumping the car and it was off the ground, and measure down there as well. And then at the end, there should be a final difference of toe from all the way up to all the way down, and there's a limitation with how much that can be for your bump stop on the car. Oh, good. That'll work. Hey, Charlie brought a jack that I'm going to need and I'm taking too long to do this process and he needs the parts off the rear of the car so he can make the uh, rear tie rod ends on his lathe so he's gonna start tearing the rear of the car apart. Making YouTube videos takes a while like yeah it takes way longer than if you just get down and work on a car. Like people don't realize how much time this yeah, takes like, to like think about filming and stuff. Triple or quadruple what it would take you to just take it apart and do it. So I'm trying to do this front shin dig and i know it says you're supposed to remove the spring and i was just thinking i didn't have to and I, yeah you definitely have to so if spring is out now i can just freely compress the suspension and not worry about it picking the car up since the spring is not in there that literally took like five minutes to do thankfully because i had charlie here and he could hold the suspension while i was undoing the top hat now because i have lowering springs on this car i do not need a spring compressor there's no tension on the spring so you can just undo the top nut with lowering springs and remove the spring just like i did right here i have a lot of math to do and charlie you went to school for mechanical engineering didn't you yeah, I mean, I didn't finish the degree, but yes. So you're better at math than I am. I thought for a short while I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. So you're better at math than I am, so I won't have to take an hour to do this, so I might need to run some numbers with you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Two brains is better than one. Oh, shit. Put this thing right in there. Oh, you're a big bottle jack. This is going to be interesting. Thirteen and a half. So that's static ride height right there. Okay, so we get zero of these out. Hold on, that's not dead straight. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Still thirteen and a half. This is exactly static ride height when the car is just sitting on level ground, thirteen and a half inches from the center of the hub, all the way up to the lower edge of the fender well. So, all right, that's zeroed out. All right, zero, dead center, thirteen and a half inches. I'm going to compress the suspension one inch, to twelve and a half. Take my readings back down to 14 and a half, take readings, and then I'll hit bump stop and let it go all the way just for the hell of it. Okay, okay, here it goes. It's about there. This one is at approximately 78. What is yours at? 75. So the difference? Three thousandths of an inch and then towed out. Three thousandths of an inch. Hope mine's coming back. What the f That's weird. Well, as the suspension goes through its cycle, yeah. the wheel travels in an arc. It doesn't okay. actually move straight up and down. What is yours at? Positive two thousandths. Mine is at negative half. So. So zero? Yeah, it's a, it toes in and out about six thousandths of an inch through that two inch. Wow. So that's really, really close. That, I mean, like. That to, is really good. To get it any closer than that, you're going to spend exponentially more time and money. Okay, so there's the measurements. I got three thousandths of an inch toe in under rebound and three thousandths of an inch toe out on compression, which is barely anything. Now keep in mind this car has not had its alignment yet, but that doesn't matter. This will, the, the measurements of how far out it is right now under compression and rebound will change, but once it has in its alignment, it may not be like towed out three thousandths of an inch and maybe like towed in three thousandths of an inch or six thousandths of an inch. Yeah, the alignment just changes the total toe in or out. It doesn't change the bump steer. So the bump steer is good. This These kits worked then. Yeah, that's actually really good bump steer. It'd be really, really hard to get any better than that. Total range of travel from hitting bump stop to all the way full rebound, I guess you could say, or drooped is 
19 thousandths of an inch, which is well under 30 thousandths of an inch. Bump steer roll center correction kit on the front of the car, as far as I'm concerned, is good to go. It's ready for an alignment. Now the rear. This right here is a set of custom one-off rear tie rods and all the fittings to correct the rear bump steer. Hello. It's another day. My shoulder just cracked. That was awkward. It's another day and the parts you just saw Charlie fabricated for the MR2 after doing a bunch of math measurements and he made a video of it that he's going to be putting on his own YouTube channel. There's a link down below to that. So if you want to see the fabrication and process of these here parts, there's his video. Be easy on him. He's new to this whole YouTube thing. So, all right. So now what, what's up with that? We got to put some green Loctite on the outside of these so they can't ever move or come out. Even though it's a press fit, just double sure. Cause it's your steering. Then we need to press them in here with your press. These right here, little plates, these are temporary that we're going to mount up on the car with these new rear tie rods and do the same measurements for bump steer in the front. Once it's dialed in and the bump steer is correct, make marks on this and he's going to go machine a new set of these that are non-adjustable so that way it'll be permanently corrected. Just like that. That's nice. Oh damn, I gotta take the spring out to do this, I bet. Oof. Now that that's put back together, Charlie is adjusting his custom fabricated measurement tab. I'll show you. So that's it right here, huh? This thing is going to slide down and up until we get the measurement just right. Yeah, and this piece is for literally for testing only, just to get the, the measurement. Plate right here. This plate. I'm gonna remake the actual real one that's way beefier. Okay. This is just so we can dial it in exactly so that I can measure this distance between these two bolts and make the real one. This is the old factory garbage that was on there. It's got the little trunnion in the middle to adjust the length and the bushing right here, the little salad fork, looks like garbage. And the new one made out of 6061 T6 aluminum, aluminium. That is super nice looking, so nice. Makes me wanna powder coat my subframe and these are pretty cleaned up. It's pretty cleaned up under here. It's not too bad. The thing that's crazy about all this is when you lower a car, technically you should do all of this stuff that I'm doing in this video. If you want your car to actually handle and perform properly, just lowering a car is not going to make it handle any better if the geometry is all out of whack. Am I right or am I right? Yeah. If you just lower a car, you actually alter the suspension geometry like quite a bit. So if it's more than an inch or probably so inch and a half, even just a little bit and drastically I'll... affects geometry. So the stiffer spring rate is why everybody thinks a slammed car handles better. But if you put a stiffer spring rate, that's stock length, it will probably handle better than just a slammed car. Hi buddy. You come to hang out? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go up one inch. Mine's a full rotation. They want a full rotation? Yep, keep going a little bit more. Stop. 10. So one of. 110 thousandths? Yep, mine's 100. Mine went 55. 110 and 55. And that was going counterclockwise? First uncorrected measurement of compression at one inch is 55 thousandths. So that's a shit ton. <laughs> so we need to do a correction now to make it uh, under 30 thousandths because it should be no more 30 thousandths total, right? At the whole thing. So that's 15 and 15. Yeah, more or less. And that's a butters. Hey, butt face. So the measurements I'm not too concerned about because we know that it toes in a bunch on compression. What I wanted to make sure is that it toes back out on rebound. Because okay. if it toes back out and then comes way back in, then you have to worry about tie rod length and a, there's a bunch of other calculations that have to go into, into play. The new corrected number is point zero, zero, seven. Zero, seven. 
seven thousandths of an inch of toe in under one inch of compression. Way better than the first measurement because the plate that you mount to the hub was actually not tight and it was shifting around. Kind of a stupid mistake, but that's why it was way off our first time testing. That is, that's money right there. This one is at 90 and this one is at 72. And this is at two inches of suspension compression, which is almost at the bump stop. Final verdict is then, 18 thousandths of an inch on two inches of compression, seven thousandths at one inch, and then at one inch of droop, it's 10 thousandths, and all the way letting the suspension drop so the car's off the ground, jumping in the air is kind of pointless, is at 50 thousandths. Thank you for fabricating me these pieces. You're welcome. Be sure to check out his video on the entire fabrication process of these parts. He machined them on his lathe from scratch. It's very detailed step-by-step, -step, like what he's doing, measurements, setting up the lathe, et cetera, et cetera. Cause he's gonna start trying to do YouTube stuff on like machining and fabricating and his own project Baja truck thing he wants to build. Anyway, um, check it out down below. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this thing aligned in the next video. So you'll see the final little tabs he just makes today. And uh, I'm gonna put this thing back together and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.